What's poppin' people? Welcome back to Fibble Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome to another Transfer News Daily video where I give you guys updates of what's going on across the world football's media regarding Chelsea. I consolidate said information, tell you what I think about it, and present it to you in this video series. Today we're talking about delayed contract talks from Chelsea youngsters, the two that's left who haven't signed yet. I'm going to be talking about transfer targets, those being pushed around in the headlines, realistic ones, perhaps not so realistic ones, and what Chelsea can expect to maybe actually happen. And just give you the lowdown on anything else I can think of at the time regarding these news stories. So before we get into the good gear, make sure you do subscribe to Football Therapy, hit the bell notifications icon please, and like the video if you want to help me out. Also click the link in the top of the description to go check out Yan Plays and watch me play Football Manager. Alright, let's start off with delayed contract talks of two Chelsea youngsters and those two integral youngsters to this Chelsea squad are Tammy Abraham the big number nine as well as Reese James Chelsea's right back. Frank Lampard and the Blues have secured the long-term futures of loads of youngsters in the squad that include let's have a look here Fikayo Tomori recently, Callum hudson Adoy, Jesus what a saga that was, Mason Mount, decent, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, huge, and Billy Gilmore. Superb for all these kids to be dedicating their futures to Chelsea Football Club, but you know, Tammy Abraham arguably is maybe the most important at the moment as Chelsea's number nine, and obviously Reese James is, is regarded as one of the best right backs, uh, or certainly prospects, in European football at the moment. But both do love Chelsea and they both want to be playing at Chelsea for a long time. So I imagine it's just a sort of trivial, small things in the contracts that the agents need to sort out. I mean, this is the dirty side of football, isn't it? Yeah, anyway, hopefully they get sorted out soon enough. I'll of course keep you updated on football therapy, but let's talk about some transfers and footballers. In today's video, I'm talking about three players. I will be talking about other players that have been linked as the stories progress. For example, people like Jeremy Boga and Nathan Ake, which does actually look highly likely. But in this video, I'm going to be talking about Wilfried Zaha and how the journalist has made recent comments about his likelihood coming to Chelsea. Samuel Chakwezi, I hope I said that right, the young winger that looks pretty good, but not great, but has been linked with Chelsea over and over and over and over. And a little bit more far-fetched, Erling Haaland. Apparently now Chelsea have joined the race to sign him. Obviously, he's an insane player in terms of how many goals he scores, but I'm going to be talking about that a little bit more as well. Right, Chelsea have been heavily linked with the acquisition, or potential acquisition, of Palace winger Wilfred Zaha for a long time now. Chelsea seems like an ideal location, target, destination for the player, and he's often touted as an Eden Hazard replacement. Obviously not as good as Hazard, but in terms of how he can tricky, pacey winger that can basically get up and down and dribble a lot. I've expressed my opinions on Zaha many times on this channel and if you want to hear those, go back and watch older videos. But the links are incredibly, very, incredibly, incredibly, very, incredibly, there's some good English for you there. They're strong, they're strong links and they're recurring constantly. Journalist Dominic Fifield recently commented on the potentiality of Chelsea signing Wilfred Zaha this January when he was speaking to The Athletic. He said, I would be surprised if Chelsea forked out £80 million plus in January for Wilfred Zaha. I could see the move happening at some point in the future, possibly this summer, but I would still be taken back if they were willing to spend a club record fee on a player who is integral to Crystal Palace and everything they do but still hasn't scored 10 goals in a season or very often. Look at what Chelsea need. They need a left back, a centre half, a striker to provide competition for Tammy Abraham. And I don't think Zaha as a central striker works. Zaha has scored three goals and made one assist in 17 appearances for Crystal Palace so far this season. Yeah, so Fifefield's being sensible there, essentially saying he can't see it happening in terms of the money it would require in January and what Zaha would bring in the more immediate sense. I agree, if Chelsea are to get Zaha, they'd probably wait till his contract runs down a little bit more, even if that's in, you know, the summer. But by then, probably they can have their beady little eyes on some more realistic, more talented, 
and younger targets. Keep it locked to Football Therapy, I will of course keep you guys updated with all the stories regarding Chelsea transfers. Right, Samuel Chukwezi, or Chuck Wazy. I'm sure you guys will be correcting me down in the comments. So, 22 year old Nigerian winger that plays for Villarreal on the right wing, and here's the best part, is left footed. He has three goals and one assist in nine appearances in La Liga this season, which is a bit... Meh. And last season, he only managed seven goal involvements all campaign. Now, I know this is playing for Villarreal, and he's a very young player, but really, this doesn't excite me too much. Now, if you think about the sort of tangible facts of this potential transfer, it might make sense. If Chelsea are indeed looking for a replacement for Pedro Rodriguez, who's looking likely to leave in January, and they just want someone to rotate in, in, you know, the cup, and just have a look at and if he is amazing in training start bringing him off the bench and then who knows he can challenge for a spot because Chelsea have been linked with a sort of Galactico level winger like Jadon Sancho who apparently they are very interested in but this would have to be like a kind of Jeremy Bogus style purchase a rotational fourth choice winger that gets given the chance to prove himself in training Samuel is interesting though because he's left footed and apparently he grew up idolizing Iron Robin I read that online uh, I'm just gonna trust it. Now, trusting something you read online. Anyway, even if his offensive metrics aren't insane, you should always hope for a player taking a step up into a better, more attacking club that maybe they can progress themselves as well, especially when they're young in their early 20s. But he matches the player profile of what Chelsea need, a right winger with a left foot who is incredibly pacey. Lampard will like all of that, overlapping with perhaps Rhys James or underlapping with Rhys James on the right flank, Beating defenders, beating fullbacks, maybe getting cutbacks in behind and hopefully getting more than one or two assists in the season. I'm not so sure about this player, to be honest I haven't really watched him, I've just looked at his stats. But he might be perfect for what Chelsea need. The fact of the matter is he's been heavily, heavily linked with Chelsea over and over and over this kind of like last week or so. So maybe there has been contact by Chelsea to the player or the agent or the club. Maybe it's a really realistic fee. Who knows, but personally, I'd like to see Jeremy Berger back, even though he probably doesn't fit the profile quite right or the, what Chelsea need to slot into the club as much as Chuck Wazy. Chuck Wazy. Anyway, I'll keep you updated. Right, Erling Haaland, the 19-year-old Norwegian superstar striker. You all know who he is. He scored like six hat-tricks this season or something, including one in the Champions League. He plays in the Austrian League for RB Salzburg, and let's just have a look here. So we know he's 19 years old, he's still a teenager, he plays for Salzburg, <laughs> he's Norwegian, he has 41 goals throughout all competitions, international and domestic and, you know, European this season already. Where are we? We're, before Christmas he has 41 goals! Oh yeah, but he only plays in the Austrian League, that's really, really bad. Well, he has 8 Champions League goals in a team that didn't qualify out of the group stage and an assist and a hat trick. Jeez. Who scored gave him a 7.45 rating in the Champions League as well, which is actually really good considering he's a teenager playing for Salzburg. Absolutely insane player, hot property. He probably would fit the player profile of someone Chelsea would like to challenge Tammy Abraham, but let's just be real here. As I was perusing Chelsea transfer news this morning across all internet platforms and publications, it did come up a couple of times. Chelsea joined the race for Haaland. Apparently Manchester United were leading the race the whole time, and yeah, I get it, they need him. They could probably play him next to Rashford and be pretty deadly, actually, especially Rashford and James running down the flanks. Martial's been a bit more quiet of late, I suppose, but Haaland would be amazing for them because he could play the counter-attacking football that Solskjaer likes to play very, very well. But to be honest, man, I never really understood why I'd go to United. Well, I would actually because it would be an amazing step up. Premier League, United are a huge team. But for me, what made sense more is he goes to Leipzig. He goes to Dortmund, which he would he's visited both clubs recently. He's definitely going, and probably this January. And Dortmund or Leipzig makes more sense. Apparently, there's a link between Salzburg and Leipzig. I can't imagine what it is. And that would make sense, especially if Timo Werner leaves in the summer. He could like rotate with him and then take up the mantle moving forward. Even Dortmund makes way more sense. And then from Leipzig or Dortmund, then he can make the step up to Barcelona or Real Madrid inevitably in two or three years. You know how football works. To be honest, I'm not so sure the Premier League straight away would be a great idea. And yes, he has been heavily linked to Manchester United, but 
I don't think these links to Chelsea are particularly very real. It wouldn't make sense for Chelsea. I mean, it would be good to get a striker of that ability in to rotate with Tammy Abraham, who knows, both be on the same pitch at the same time in certain formations and push each other on to become better and better. Still, I definitely have my doubts about this new story and will do more and more and more until I see him and an agent meeting some Chelsea representative somewhere, because it doesn't really make sense. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comments below. Let me know your opinions on the players I've spoken about. Do you think Samuel Chakwezi is a good acquisition for Chelsea? Would you rather see Bogo? Would you rather Chelsea? So you just wait until the summer or perhaps look at a centre back, look at Ake a bit more, or look at a left back. Let me know, get down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the content today guys, make sure you do like the video, that helps me a lot. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new and follow me on social media at Football Yannick on Twitter and Instagram and do go check out Yam Plays, link in the top of the description. Watch me play video games, it's loads of fun. That's it for me guys, you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby